Hello Terraria Enthusiasts, my name is James and welcome back to my let's play of the Terraria Lunatic mod. So it's day 8 and we're picking up pretty much directly after the last episode. We defeated Wall of Flesh and now it's our goal to get ourselves some hard mode ores. So it's my goal with today's episode to do a little bit of a transition into what we're going to be doing with the mechanical bosses. So I don't think we'll be getting bosses done today. But what we will be doing is we will be making a pretty awesome setup. Or at least that kind of was the goal. I'm not used to this. As you guys know, I'm a, I'm a corruption kind of guy. I don't do crimson. I don't think I've done hard mode crimson in literally years. That's weird to say, but it's, it's kind of true. Now, the setup that I actually want to go with today is a meteorite staff and a golden shower. I want to use the golden shower for personal reasons. Don't read too much into that. But the personal reasons being that I never actually ever use it and it's a pretty sick weapon, right? So I want to get full use out of it because, come on, how often do I play Crimson? Not so much. Now with that, I think if we can get a debuff on a boss, combine that with the Meteorite Staff, it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be really interesting. Although, I am saying this now and I'm thinking, can you even debuff the Mechanical Worm? Well, we'll find out for tomorrow anyway. But it's my goal with today's episode to get all of the ore that we need, to get the weapons that we need. We might even get a summoning staff. It's going to be a weapons episode. I think it's going to be good. Now, in the real world, what have I been up to today? Well, I finally used today to clean up my office because my office is a bit of a hovel. It, it, it's a dumping ground for me. I've got a big, large desk. It, it's too much space, really. So I'm like, hmm, random book. Let's place that on the desk. I'm like, mug of coffee? Yeah, we'll leave that there for a few hours and I'll have two mugs instead of one. Do you get what I mean? It's not good. But I used it today to clean up all my Christmas decorations. Believe it or not, I have them still up. I mean, not around my house, right? My partner does that. She's great. She gets the Christmas tree. She folds it back up into the box. You know, all the ornaments get wrapped and sealed. It's great. It's not the level of commitment I could do. I tell you what, do uh, you know I don't play Crimson, so here's my little thoughts on this. Not many altars, is there? There's not many altars at all. <laughs> like, the, there was, how many was that? Two? One? I'm going to have to mine through. I think that's what I'm, what I'm actually going to have to do. I'm going to have to mine through to get some of the other ones. But this was the thing, right? So I had a mini Christmas tree on my desk, and it's been great. I bought it. It came with its own set of lights attached. I thought that's very convenient. And I was pretty happy with it, you know, I was, I was pretty buzzed about it. And then I went to move it today, and it's not what I expected. So I went to move it, and as I moved it, every single one of the pines just completely fell off. I actually forgot that it was a real-life tree because of the fact that it's not really been doing much since I got it. It's just been kind of sat there, pretty much doing nothing. And I thought, this is great, you know, I, I, I don't have to ever worry about this this living thing. And I, I forgot so much that it was a living thing. I really didn't expect it. So I went to literally move it and about a thousand pines just fell off and just jabbed me in the hand. It wasn't the best experience. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I probably would never buy one again just because cleaning that up was a real pain. Hoovering it, it didn't work because these pines were stuck into my carpet at this point. So there's a little life lesson for you guys. If you ever get Christmas decorations, don't be lazy. Don't leave it into halfway through January. New year, new me. You know what I mean? And with these two destroyed, that should be enough now. So I've got Mithril and Adamantite, and I think the first one was Orichalcum. So <laughs> what we've got to get doing is mining. That's the very first thing. I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to go through the sets. So we'll go Orichalcum, Mithril, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the drill. I'm going to bring you along for some mining so we can have a little chit chat and whatnot. Because otherwise today might be a little bit short if you're not beating a boss, you know, Hey, actually, oh man, where's my ale? Have I got any ale? <laughs> Where is it? Okay, here we go. Right, he's down for a pint, son. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Paddy. I know you can do this. Don't show me up now. I saw you with it. Come on. He's not... <laughs> Come on. Have a drink with me, son. Oh, man. Oh, you're letting the team down. Paddy, please. Stop. He's like turning his back to me. He's like, nah, I don't want to do that. No, come on. Clink me. <laughs> Jesus. You had it out a second ago. Come on, do the Easter egg. 
Oh my. Why are you laying me down? Hey, hey, hey. There we go. Right. Was that worth it? Probably not. So yeah, we're going to do a little bit of this today. A little bit ex of exploring and working our way through. So that mining potion is going to finally come in useful. I've only got a few of these. And I think mining when you haven't got them sucks, right? The uh, Splunk potions. So let's zoom on out and check out what we've got. Uh, what is this? I'm, I'm actually like, I didn't really pay attention to the ores. When I said Orichalcum, it was a guess. Or is it even Orichalcum? I can't remember the other name. You know, I'm an old school. Cobalt, Mithril, Adamantite. That's the way I play. Uh, is, it's that brighter orange stuff though, isn't it? Is that what that is? So I know there's some there. Man, how can... This is bad, but like, how can I play Terraria so many times and still be so bad? I just don't learn. <laughs> I, just never, I never bother to learn the things I should be learning. So, we got a great comment yesterday. So, somebody writes uh, that he had to do an assignment on The Hobbit, and instead of learning The Hobbit or reading The Hobbit, he just played the PS2 game, or he recited his memory of the PS2 game. That is pretty much how I got through a lot of school. I used to go on this thing called, I think it was called like Cliff Notes or Spark Notes. And you could either have a book basically just kind of like explain to you in a sentence or like, you know, a paragraph or whatever. Or you could see somebody's assignment and just read that. You know, it wasn't for cheating. Like I never had a class where, you know, you had to, uh, to basically recite anything like that. But when I was a kid, I would be like, hmm, do I read this book or do I play this game and I cliff note it later? Yeah, I was a cliff note kind of guy. I used to be like at the back of my class with an iPod touch because that's just what I had. Uh, connected to the school's Wi-Fi because I saw the password on a teacher's uh, notepad. Connected to the Wi-Fi, Spark noting it at the back of the class, right? I think it was called Spark Notes. It might have been called Cliff Notes. But that's a really good idea. <laughs> it's actually it's it's not. But my goal with the uh, with the Hobbit, you know, retelling is to to give you the full experience. And by that, I mean enough to get you for your English assignment, if it ever happens. I don't know if people ever read uh, The Hobbit anymore as, as part of an English assignment. I can't imagine so. I don't know. I don't know why you would do it in the first place. Like, having read uh, like a little bit more of it now, you know, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't know. We, we used to read this book when I was in school. There are a few books that everyone has to read, right? Of Mice and Men. You guys know that one, right? There's a bit of a, a spoiler with that book. I'm not going to say it, just in case, right? Just in case you're reading of Mice and Men, it could happen. But um, there, there's a big spoiler with it, right? You don't need to know. And I remember uh, we were all in class and we got given out this copy of, of Mice and Men. And what the school do is they essentially like keep the same books, the same 30 books. They pass them on to the next year because they know, of course, that they're going to be teaching it the next year. So it's just economical to not have to keep buying the same book, right? And, uh, and I remember my buddy opened it up, and on the first page, the first page, somebody had scribbled in Biro the end of the book. And I was just like, you absolute troll. Like, he never knew who, who, that, who that would get, you know what I mean? He, he never knew. He, he, just, he, just, he just did it. I tell you what, though, there was a time when that actually came in really useful for me. So, I think we were trying to dissect, it might have been Romeo and Juliet, but this was at A-level. So, you know, you have to do it in a little bit more detail than, oh, it's a fellow. It was the book of fellow. It was the player fellow, right? The, the script of fellow. And, uh, and I got this book from the, um, from the college, and they were like, here's your book. And it was almost like, if you guys have seen Harry Potter, it was almost like reading the Half-Blood Prince, where, you know, Harry opens the book, and inside is like everything you would ever need to know. But to a better standard than it would ever teach you. And I opened up this copy of a fellow, and it had everything. It made my year so much better. It was kind of amazing. I love that. Uh, so that was great. That was good for me. But yeah, watch out for spoilers if you're ever going to read that one. But we used to read this other one. This other book was great. It was called uh, Martin Pig. I don't think schools do this book anymore. But it was about a guy called Martin Pig. I'm going to spoil this one. So if you are reading Martin Pig... You're probably not. Don't worry. Don't worry. So it's, a guy, it's about a guy called Martin Pig who has, like, an alcoholic father. So he's got to live with his alcoholic father. He's not enjoying, you know, living with him. His father is, like, an idiot. He's pushy. You know, it is what it is. And with that, 
His dad gets into an argument, slips, and cracks his head on the mantelpiece, dying, right? Now, Martin is faced with the problem here of, okay, I've got to ring the police, or, or, I could not ring the police. And so he goes through his father's things just to see what's going on, and he finds this, like, letter, and inside, his father had hidden a bunch of money. So he comes up with this plan, because he loves reading the Sherlock Holmes novels, to, uh, to basically cover up his father's death, even though it's not his fault, to go and cash the check that his father was going to cash, and, uh, and go off and live his life. It's a real weird story, and the, the kid in it's maybe about 14, and it has some more twists. I mean, that's pretty much summing up the very first chapter, so I'm not ruining anything else. But that was a good book. That was actually a really good book. Like, that's one that stuck with me. I must have read that when I was about 12. It was great. It was great. I'm trying to think of some of the other books that you read. I don't know if people read uh, Catcher in the Rye anymore. The last I heard about that is that they don't they do not do it anymore. It's banned or whatever. Is that true? I don't know. Americans, can you answer that? I'm very curious because obviously people in Britain don't really read it. It's a very American book. And you... Tr oh, I don't know. You, uh, uh, of Mice and Med is the most American thing going, right? Huh. Okay. Right. I've run out of Spelunker, so I'm going to go grab some more. So, in terms of mining, my friend, I think we will uh, we'll call it that for uh, for our little experience mining together. You've heard about books, uh, but I will go and do the rest of it now, just off camera, so that you guys don't have to see too much more of it. Uh, but I'm glad that you enjoyed that little segment, or you en you joined me for that little segment. That's probably the better word. <laughs> okay, All right, I'll go. Uh, I'll go mine. I'll see you guys soon. It's going to be great. Oh, hand them on me the whole time. So that wasn't actually too bad. Uh, I managed to mine all of the stuff that I need to mine. I went through the motions, and I'm pretty sure I've got enough adamantite to finish my set because I was building it out, and I didn't have a helmet, so I had to do some last-minute mining. So we're on our way to the uh, to the dungeon now, not to go and get any kind of like accessory or out, but I need some books because I don't know where and naturally spawn. What is that? I don't think I've ever seen one of those. How have I gone this long without seeing that? What? Oh, it's a, it's a crimson thing. That's, yeah, that's a crimson thing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I need some uh, some books, essentially, to build out my bookcase. Here's a little fun fact. You can't craft books in Terraria because Red thought it'd be dumb because who wrote the books? That makes sense, right? That makes sense. And that's why... Oh my god, I'm a moron. Oh, I'm a real moron. Okay, right. The dungeon's not even that way. I play so many worlds where it's on the left. I'm so not used to it being on the right. I'm excited about these day blooms though. I forgot, I also need to uh, to mine this out because I don't have any because I sold it all. Ooh, okay, that was not good. <laughs> I could have got absolutely crushed by sand then. That's all right. Yeah, I'm going to head to the right, though, and we're going to go and get those books. I think you only need ten. Ten seems about right, and I think you just make it at a sawmill. I'm pretty certain. I think that's right. I don't know, but hopefully it is. So, <laughs> I'm a little bit knackered, truthfully. I'm a little bit knackered. You're thinking, James, are you, are you burnt out of Terraria? No, no, no. I'm, like, genuinely just knackered. So, last night... I, uh, I stayed up late because I was editing up a Hytale video because some Hytale news come out. You know me, I've been doing this for a long time. I like to, to get on news straight away. I think that's one of my uh, one of my redeeming qualities. Has this had two meteorites at the same spot? It must have because this is just too large at this point. But yeah, so I stayed up super late doing that. And then I got to bed, like, I crept to bed. My phone died while I was, uh, while I was editing. So, I didn't want to turn on any lights in the bedroom. And I basically had to, like, creep in like I was blind. You know, trying not to, like, wake my partner. Because I had no light on my phone. I would usually just use the brightness of my phone screen to figure out how to maneuver around this bedroom, right? Couldn't do that. That was a little bit unfortunate. Um, <laughs> but I, like, got into bed. And I, like, grabbed my Switch like a kid. And I, like, kind of put the quilt over my head this is this is this is like such a kid moment right but i was like i'm gonna stay up late and i'm gonna play cave blazers and i did i smashed out so many hours of it last night it must have been up till about uh maybe two three in the morning because i would end a run and i'd be so hooked i'd be like right i've learned that this enemy does this i need to go back in and uh and do it the cool thing is you face bosses after a few floors and it's cool because there are a multitude of bosses i haven't seen them all yet 
And that's what's really exciting because you think you've got a hold of the game and then it throws out a big giant spider at you and you're like, okay, so you throw a giant spider at me and you know I hate them and you've got to adapt. I'm really trying to sell this game to you. <laughs> I like it. I think it should be more popular. I do. Uh, I never I never met the, the developer of the game. I had the chance to and I never took the chance because I'd never played the game at that point. But now I wish I had because I want to talk to him about it. I want to ask him questions and I can't. It's a shame, right? I was in the room with him. I could have spoke. I didn't. All right. I blew my chance, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 10 books exact. I'm going to grab a few more for good luck. Oh, I tell you what I also needed to grab while I'm down here. I'm glad I actually stayed now because I wanted to grab myself a water candle because we are going to have to basically farm away its stuff. I'm going to break this. Yeah, we're going to have to farm away its stuff throughout the series. So I think grabbing myself a water candle is going to really help. I hope I haven't passed one on the way because this is a real dumb, uh, basically like sidetrack. At this point, can I just find a uh, water candle, please? There we go. Right. There's one. I'm going to take two for good luck. They stack, right? I'm pretty sure they stack. Not like on top of each other, just in general. Can I make a bookcase? There it is. So I can't use this bookcase yet. I need a wizard to, to come into my life. So that's going to be a bit annoying. But that's all right. I don't need that exactly right now. So, making up the final piece, I'm going to make a mana one because that's what we're going with first, right? But we can make others, apparently. You only need 12, so we'll bear that in mind. Now I need to farm out. So, I probably should get my laser rifle back out. Now I need to farm out some pixie dust and some souls of light. Good thing is, I've already got four souls of light and we have two of these bad boys. So, I think this is how you can stack them. Or I'm pretty certain this is how you can stack them. This was maybe back in the day. I don't know. Let's uh, put that there. So you can place one and you can hold one. And it apparently doubles up the effects. Which is quite cool. I'm already getting them. So this is our current damage with this gun. Ooh, look at that. Our first mount. A blessed apple. Hey. <laughs> we haven't had a single mount in this series. So I'm actually really happy with this. I look majestic. This might end up on the thumbnail because I look so majestic. Right, I'm continuing to farm, by the way. I don't need... Oh, I need 10. I just looked over on my monitor to cheat. I need 10. And I've got 10. Where hey? All right, let's go underground. Oh, I look good, don't I? Look at that. Way. I don't get excited about a lot of things in Terraria, but every now and again, I catch myself off guard. So let's go down to this area down here. This is what's actually good about this world. I obviously know where my underground crimson is because the crimson's quite deep, and I think that the bottom of it counts as underground anyway. But I know it in this world because as I've been like exploring around, I've just found it anyway. So that's kind of cool. I like that because in some worlds you get to hard mode and you're like, right, now I need to dig a weird shape into the world. It's annoying. It's frustrating. So because of the fact that I'm using a mana loadout without any mana potions or mana regen potions, this will be a pretty janky setup at first. But what I'm hoping is that with a few potions, I can just continue to... Uh, to, to grow because mana regen is I always forget this but I, I'm fairly certain it's a star and maybe a blink root or maybe a day bloom okay here we are this is where I need to be and this is the perfect spot actually because we are going to place down get this a, uh, a water candle like so and we're going to hold one and we are going to chill around here until we get lots of enemies and we'll get lots of souls of light Let's test this theory out. Huh. Nothing. But. <laughs> but. There is stuff to uh, to fall into. Like all this lava and that. Alright. That's a solar knight. That's good. Oh. I hope I find my wizard actually. I should probably stay in an area where I can find the wizard. Well you know. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. The irony is by the way. That we're in hard mode. And this happens to me every series. The episodes get a little bit shorter, you know, like sometimes they're like 24 minutes and they get shorter, but I have to record for longer. Do you know what I mean? Because hard mode requires a lot of grinding. So let me know if you'd like to see more grinding. <laughs> Don't read into that. <laughs> oh, slowly waiting for the mana to regen is actually kind of painful. <laughs> oh, the wizard. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Get away, get away, get away. Hey, we did it. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was actually really good. 
I was just in my own little world then thinking, huh, I might farm for the spider staff. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> That's that chaos out of the way. Just two more to go. Right. In we go. <laughs> hey, right, out of there. All right, let's quickly heal. Is there a nurse nearby? Oh, she's up here. All right, nurse. Heal me up, my dude. Thank you. Right. So, we've done it. This take this took a while. <laughs> I've been I've been recording for a while. <laughs> Let's see how many days we got. This is the only episode where I'm like, we don't need to worry about the apocalypse. Now we have 11 days. I've wasted 3 days, but it's all with uh with pretty good upgrades. I guess if I was really good, I could beat the bosses and get hallowed armor, but I'm not that good. We got enough meteorite to make 86 bars. Wow. Okay. Let's see here. So meteorite staff. This is it. It does 60 magic damage. It showers meteors. Here it is. Pretty cool, right? I don't know if you guys use this one very often. I know I don't, so I thought it'd be very fun to use. But with that being said, I think that will be it for today's episode. So I hope you enjoyed. It was nice hanging with you guys, and I will be back tomorrow. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like rating, a big fat thumbs up. But that's it. Right, see you in the next one, guys. Peace.